Good morning, my creative friends. I thought that I would start a little bit differently this morning. So you can see my, my hair is a little crazy this morning. I got my favorite old flannel PJs and favorite old sweatshirt on here this morning. So welcome, I'm Dr. Manette Riordan, and this is Painting in Your PJs Live with Manette. And I started this series like maybe last December and have been going strong ever since as a way to just connect with people live around topics and themes that I'm interested in and maybe you're interested in as well. And to show you how I use my creative process as a means of both play as well as a tool for emotional regulation, for personal growth, and just to be able to create some community around the things that I think are super important, which are life, how we choose to live our lives, love, are we coming from love, are we feeling love, especially self-love, and all things art and creativity. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about some of the ways I love to repurpose old books into art journals. And there's so many different ways to do this and so many amazing teachers that show um, options for this, but I love doing it because one, I'm a total book junkie. Two, I've decided that I love creating journals that are very utilitarian and beautiful as well. And also because it's a great way to keep old books out of the dumps and landfills. And when we moved twice in the last uh, sort of couple of decades, we moved in 2012 and again last year in 2022, what we noticed was people didn't want old books. Like libraries would only take them if they were relatively new. And we had a lot of books. The first time we moved away from Plano, Texas in 2012, we had you know boxes and boxes of old textbooks and books in multiple languages. Now that I have fallen in love with bookmaking, probably wish I'd kept some of those, but now I know that there are so many different ways to use old books. And what I love about this process and practice is I love creating something that is completely my own, but that is built on something that someone else has created, kind of like a palimpsest. And a palimpsest is one of my favorite words. If you don't know what a palimpsest is, the Rosetta Stone is an example of a palimpsest. But it used to be in olden times when they were writing on wood or on papyrus, and they would reuse materials because materials were really precious. And sometimes new meaning would be created because not everything would get scraped off and you would write over the top of what was already there. And some of those words and letters might show through. And so a palimpsest is about creating layers of meaning. And I think our whole life is like a palimpsest where we're creating layers and layers of meaning. So thank you for being here. Thank you for watching the replay. I'd love for you to hit that like button and subscribe to Painting in Your PJs Live with Minette so you know when I'm going live. I go live Mondays to Thursdays and some Fridays if I'm up and about at 7 a.m. Mountain Time for anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. I love sharing my visual journaling practice with you as I go. And as one of my friends said yesterday, I just sort of ramble on about all the things that I'm passionate about and hope that some of my rambles resonate with you and help to brighten up your day. So I'm going to switch my video screen and I'm going to dive right in here to this idea. So there's an amazing bookstore. I shared this in part one of this series yesterday up in Estes Park, Colorado. There's a little used bookstore called The Cliffhanger, which benefits the local library. And they have a room full of all these books that are 25 cents. And I found these cool hardback books that were an actual magazine. You can still just see the name under there called Horizon. And so here's one. I think I ended up getting maybe four of these. I wish I'd gotten more. Here's one that I created last November as part of um, the month of gratitude as a gratitude journal. So you can see I painted the cover and I had a lot of fun on the inside doing all kinds of things playing, stitching, painting, 
the pages are a little bit sticky. You can hear them coming apart. I love this one. It had some fun collage bits in here. Cityscapes. I love doing collage. This was a non-dominant hand self-portrait, which was really fun. Some of the pages I just left painty. This one was a fun one that I stitched in, so it has fabric and collage, and it actually has a little pocket tucked in there. So this was a lesson from someone else. Um, I can't remember what the, the prompt was, but it was this kind of sad kitty, which was kind of fun. I love creating pockets of all kinds in my journals. So there's pockets and tags. But this is all created from an altered book. So I did some journaling just over tops of pages. I loved these two busts. This is Marcus Aurelius, and this was Buddha. And there was an interesting article comparing them. So just a little landscape painting. So I don't even know that this one was 100% finished. This had an amazing article about the Spanish artist Juan Miro, who's one of my favorites. And so I left this page with these gorgeous ceramic tiles and some of his paintings. So some of the things I left in, there's a big example of his painting. And I got to go to his museum in Spain when I was in university. It was amazing. So there's still work to be done in here. And this has a combination of newsprint and glossy paper. So there were interesting surfaces to work on here. I love creating doors and windows. But this was all created using, looks like those pages are glued together. Don't remember what that one was about, but looks like a woman of wisdom here. So again, so much fun to work on these different papers, the surfaces here, to leave some of the story that was there, to allow places where you know the images and words are showing through. And I had so much fun creating this one, and now I am ready to share how I might create a second one as well. So if you're here joining me live this morning, say hello. Let me know that you can hear me this morning. Super excited to be with all of you on this chilly Thursday morning. Yes, it's Thursday, but also... Um, it's clear today, and I'm so happy about the sunshine because it's been gray and drab and really quite cool the last couple of days. So I woke up to some gorgeous sunshine. So here I have this magazine, and this is from 1958. Good morning, Yvonne. And the, uh, what do you call it? You know, that piece on the end. And I'm forgetting my words this morning. Apparently, I haven't had enough coffee yet, but the the end has come off. So I'm actually going to use some gaffer's tape to seal this book. I've already gessoed the cover this morning because I wanted it to be dry. But I want to show you where I'm going to go with this book. And this piece of paper is really messy, and it's kind of, one, it's bugging me, but two, it also feels like it's ready for some to get used as some collage paper. So I am going to just kind of fold that up there out of the way. So we have kind of a clean background. That makes me happier. So gaffer's tape is super cool. It's great for reinforcing the spine. There's the word for reinforcing the spine of old books or putting books together. I use it a lot in my journals. And it's actually like um, a plumber and electrician tape. This one I actually got at a hardware store. It was a giant, giant roll of it. I also have a roll of a white gaffer's tape that's not quite as sturdy as this one. It's almost like a, a duct tape. You can buy it on Amazon or at any hardware store. And it is very, very sticky. But it's also fabric, which is super cool because then you can just paint right over the the top of it it tears really easily you can use it when you're putting books together and stitch through it because it is a fabric so it's a really great bookmaking tool to have around the house i learned about it from my good friend andrea shebelu who is just the the queen of supplies man if there's 
something that you need or something you need to know how to do, she seems to always have that answer, which I really appreciate. So I've just put that gaffer's tape right over that binding. And so now I even like the way that looks with the black. I didn't get it super straight, so I'm probably going to paint over that with the gesso too. I didn't really make an effort to, to get it super straight, and it does not come off super easy. You can see it pulls the paint, it pulls the paper, so it's very sticky. Once it's down, it's down. So make sure that if you're using the gaffer's tape once, it's you know just know that it's super sticky. Good morning, Kay. Good to see you again. I got to see you last night too. Lucky, lucky me. Good morning, Judy. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Glad to have you all here. So I've got that Horizons journal that I showed you all yesterday morning, and I have put some gesso on the cover. What's really interesting is you can't see it in the, the light of the, the camera, but it's almost like the red of that old fabric cover bled a little bit, and my gesso is actually turned a little bit pink. And I'm going to be inspired to paint this cover by the image that was on the front. So the last one that I created, which I showed at the very beginning of the video, I actually painted the whole cover. And I can't remember, it had a sailing ship or something on it. But I love, so this feels like it's going to be a journal maybe about adventure, maybe about science and exploration. So I really love this image. So before I paint the cover, I'm going to go through the book and start to pull some pages out. So what happens if I leave all the pages and then I start layering in collage and paint, then what's going to happen is I'm going to get this super fat, chunky book that won't close. And I do like for journals to be able to close. It has this nice, thick paper in the ends here so I can even paint inside of here love this envelope I showed you yesterday but you know some of these pages this is a really cool image that I might want to use for something else good morning Anne from Rhode Island welcome 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 we are creating an altered book this morning and so by the time I pull out some of these big images, it's really going to help me create some space in the journal. And what I noticed in the last one of these, what an interesting face. The last one of these that I worked in is the paper was very thin and it didn't take wet media. So I actually ended up gluing some of the pages together so that I could have a little bit thicker surface to work on. That's kind of an interesting image. I love the golden age words here. Some of these I don't really care about. So this might be one that, you know, I could pull out or I could, so I'm gonna pull this one out because those are both kind of interesting. These I'm probably gonna glue together. So th this is like just, there's lots of soldiers and not my particular type of image. So again, some of these can get glued together. Some you can see where the other page was attached. So even pulling out pages with words on them to create some room in the journal is a great thing to do. And everything just becomes collage fodder later. What a fascinating, hi Leslie, welcome, welcome my friend. What a cool map this is. So I'm thinking that this one is going to stay in the journal and then I'm going to paint around it or maybe journal around it. These old portraits are always so fascinating. And I love any time that there's portraits of artists at work. This says, Anna Maria von Sherman was the leading feminine light of Dutch intellectual and literary circles. Author, artist, philosopher, and mistress of 12 languages, she wrote a Latin dissertation on the aptitude of women's mind for science and literature. Fascinating little snippets, right? Fascinating little snippets, snippets from all of these. And the, um, this is uh, Vermeer, is the, the painter that is pictured here. 
and perfect for International Women's Day. I was just reading uh, some articles on the blog, The Marginalian, which I really love with Maria Popova and talking about all these different women scientists and how they manage to study in their age and time secretly when they weren't allowed to study. Isn't this one? And so this one is... I'm not seeing right away who the artist is. Oh, these illustrations are really wonderful. So I would maybe want to use those at some point. So I'm just kind of going through. Here's a whole piece about Allen Ginsberg and Jack Kerouac. So that tells us something about the time. So this was published in 1958. So that was an interesting period of time going into the 60s. Picture of James Dean, Elvis Presley. So some very interesting timely things here. A young abstract expressionist, Theodoro Stamos, who I don't know who that is, but that's an interesting portrait of an artist. So again, I'm just kind of randomly going through, pulling out things that I might want to use at a later time. The use of the earth, interesting. All right, so I've ripped this sort of center page, so I'm just going to pull that out. So my goal here is just to make some room in the journal, to make some room in the journal. All these charts, these make amazing collage materials, right? They make amazing collage materials. And the things I don't care about, I'm going to leave and paint over. Some of these are really beautiful too, and I don't have to decide now about all of them, but I want to just be able to get started. I really love this image, and I'm curious about the article, so that might be an article I go back to read. Look at this gorgeous volcano, volcano image, and they actually have the book of Genesis printed in here, so super, super interesting. Look at all these gorgeous. So some of these may just stay and become part of my journal. I love all these nature images love these wonderful elements so we went from genesis to paradise lost by milton like this is the most fabulous publication all right so you guys don't need to keep watching me tear images out but you kind of get the idea and so it allows me to create some space between pages so i know that this is going to be one that i'm going to want to paint and keep what's here so what I would do would be to take a glue stick or some matte medium. I might, um, might use matte medium, and let's just get these pages glued down. And then I would gesso over the page as well, the other page that I want to paint on. And by adding both the matte medium and the gesso, I'm just going to create a little better surface to paint on but also create a surface that's going to take wet media. I do like lots of layers in my art. And I'm going to press from the center out, right? Press from the center out. Just let that glue get all the way across there. Maybe even get some of that matte medium down on this surface. And what I noticed about working in an old book like this, and this one has glossy pages, is that, is that uh, it was almost impossible to avoid the bumps and the, the ripples, and so it ended up creating a lot of texture on the pages, and I just had to go with it, right? So this is an imperfect science, an imperfect process for sure. A lot of experimentation and learning what you like, but such a fabulous way to repurpose old books, keep them out of the landfills. But also, if you're just joining me, I talked at the beginning of the video about the idea of creating a palimpsest. And it's one of my most favorite words in the English language. The Rosetta Stone was a palimpsest. And if you think back to olden times when they used to have to repurpose writing 
surfaces like papyrus or wood or even stone tablets like the Rosetta Stone, what would happen is that not all of the words or letters from underneath would get wiped clean because of the nature of the surface. And so sometimes when new writing was layered over old writing, it created a whole new meaning and new stories that maybe weren't even intentional. And so creating this way in layers is like creating our own palimpsest of meaning. And so working in an old book like this, these old stories can't help but bleed through. So you can see where it's sort of already getting kind of bubbly, right? And this sort of slick surface. So I'm really putting some pressure, smoothing some of that out. I'm okay with wrinkles in the pages. They create great texture. And I have no idea where I'm going with this page, which is pretty typical for me, especially if you're new watching me. I tend to just find a place to start and just go from there. I also want to work on that cover, but I love working in a book like this because it gives me something to respond to, right? It's, it's very inspiring. I shared yesterday that I generally really love a blank book. One of the things I've learned is I don't particularly like making junk journals with all the different sizes and bits and pieces of paper. I like a good blank page, but there's something about working in these books that's different and it's responding to someone else's art and words and letting that take me just kind of on a magical journey. Hi, Georgia. Go away, sweetie. When I was painting the cover a little while, my other cat came and put his paws on my leg and dug his little claws into me. I don't know what he was thinking um, other than maybe mama needs to trim his claws. But of course, it startled me. And I had a paintbrush full of paint, so then I had a cat covered in gesso. An adventurous morning, a little early to be cleaning gesso off of cats at 6.30 in the morning, for sure. All right. So now I have this surface that I've created. Great question, Judy. I absolutely love that question. So if I wanted to use watercolor on this, there is a great tool. And um, if I come on tomorrow, I can show you how I would use it and how I would do this. So that's the Dorland's Wax. Let me see if I can find it so I can show you what it looks like. I'm not finding it right this second, but there's something called watercolor grounds, watercolor grounds made by Daniel Smith. And it must be on the other side of the studio with my other supplies. I thought I had everything over here. So I will find it and I will show a page tomorrow. So we could try watercolor on it and see what happens. It, watercolor actually does interesting things on top of gesso and it's a really fun test to use gesso and then try watercolor. But Daniel Smith makes something called watercolor grounds, watercolor grounds. I'll type that here in the, in the chat. And it will turn any surface, watercolor grounds, any surface into a surface that you can then watercolor on. And um, what I love about that, it creates a different surface. It's not like putting watercolor directly onto paper. It definitely has some tooth to it, but it creates a completely different effect and is really fun to play with. So I can happily demo that tomorrow. And I'm seeing where that matte medium didn't go all the way through to the edges of my pages. So I'm just gonna come back here with a little bit of glue stick. and get that stuck down a little bit more. So now I have this interesting map 
It says Leo Belgicus on it. I love old maps. I'm completely fascinated by old maps. And this one is fascinating because it's in the shape of a lion. And this might be a page that I just end up doing some journal writing on, right? Some journal writing on. You should be able to find it um, at a fine art store. Like I don't, they don't carry Daniel Smith products like at a Michaels or a Joann's, but like a Jerry's or maybe Dick Blick. And I'm sure they have it on Amazon as well. So I'm going to get this page dry. And then I actually want to work on my cover a little bit today. But this is how I might start with the inside. So I've glued two pages together to create more strength in those pages so that they will hold more of the wet media and layers that I love. I also might come in, let me get this dry before I start to mess it up. I'm going to mute myself so you don't have to listen. Uh -huh. You guys, I am. thank you for reminding me. I need editors all the time. So what I was saying was that sometimes working in a book like this, the, the centers of the pages, like here's a good example of one that's starting to maybe tear a little bit, that I might come in with a piece of the gaffer's tape or a piece of paper tape. And um, no, I'm not on mute. Can you hear me now? Can you guys let me know if you can hear me? I am off mute. Yes, great. Okay, you can hear me now. Fabulous. So, um, awesome. So I might use gaffer's tape or painter's tape or even, uh, not painter's tape, sorry, paper tape. Actually, you could probably use painter's tape too. It's a nice surface to paint on. And just put tape down the center of a page can also create a lot of just strength in your page if you find some of your pages are coming out. So that's a thing, another thing you can do. Another thing that I love to do is I might come back with these images that I have torn out from other places. So this is already a double page. So this is going to be a great one to just paint over.
but maybe this one over here where I want to strengthen that page up again. I might collage this whole image or I might do torn paper collage. So collage is another way, starting with a base of collage, another way to really strengthen the pages of the journal. But I want to talk about painting on these old fabric covers. It's a great surface to paint on. I still think it's so weird that this one turned all pink and that you can't see that. So first I'm going to go ahead and add some gesso to my spine here. I've just got a super cheap old chip brush, which is great for doing this kind of work. And I just want to get that white down on that gaffer's tape as well, just so it all kind of fits in there together. And then I would treat this cover like any other mixed media page in my journal and start to have fun with building up colors and layers and texture and stamps and stencils. Yesterday I showed the beginnings of another journal which I have not finished yet, where I just used collage and painted paper, a piece of handmade paper, right on to the cover. So I'm literally just cleaning off my brush, getting some of that extra gesso off. I'm going to be curious to see if that pink continues to bleed through some of my other colors on the journal. But again, I'm inspired by both the, the palette that's here. This is a really luscious palette, but also some of the imagery. And I'm kind of loving this idea of them floating in the clouds, floating in the clouds. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is come in with some blue and some white and continue that cloudy sky, at least on the front cover. You don't know what I'm going to do on the back, and they don't necessarily have to be the same. But I'm feeling inspired to come in and just have the, almost like this is a snapshot or a magnifying glass into the cover. And it's so much fun to experiment with painting on a variety of different substrates and not limiting ourselves to paper. So um, Robin Marie Smith last year for the 100 Day Project she did a whole series of painted book covers that were super cool. I can't remember if she turned it into a class or not, but she showed a lot of great examples of painting on covers. I love painting on different surfaces. I also really love painting on wood. It's one of my favorite substrates to paint on. So I'm just looking for a few different shades of blue in my stash here. So this is definitely the closest is my favorite teal. How about that? No mistakes about that. But also maybe wanting just a little bit of not really ultramarine. Ultramarine is a very green or a, um, a more like cool red blue. And these are a warmer blue. So I've got a brilliant blue hue and a teal. And I'm just going to start getting some paint on the background. I love painting clouds. And I remember at one point I was working, I have this giant painting. And I just went and watched YouTube videos on how to paint clouds. And it was just so helpful. So my gesso is probably still a little wet. I can see the words still popping through there. But I'm going to start by just getting some color on the background and just noticing this is a, a fabric covered chipboard, right, is what old books tended to be made out of. And it's very thirsty, right? It's very thirsty, meaning that it's really absorbent in a way that paper is not. And there's a lot of texture on the page as well. So it's going to take more paint to create some of that coverage. And it's interesting, this faded old photograph. This is Georgia. No, sweetie. Um, 
actually there's a, a little green and gray in that blue. My teal is brighter than the photo, so I'm just noticing that palette. And so I'm going to see, I'm going to put a tiny bit of this brilliant blue in my sky, but I might want to come in even with just, you know, a little touch of gray or green and sort of maybe even mute that a little bit. But I do want to have some different shades of blue. And I loved reading this article I was talking about this morning on the blog, The Marginalian. It is just uh, an academic paradise of just science and thought leadership and every topic from, you know, art to space and beyond. I love her articles. And today she was, had pulled one from her archives about a woman whose parents caught her using up all the candles in the home late at night. So I'm using this as my palette for my gesso here. And um, the dad said that they had to figure out how to curb her interest. She was memorizing Euclid um, or she was going to end up in an insane asylum. And so the lack of respect for women's intellect and knowledge, and she did go on to publish some really famous scientific treatises that were just her whole story was fascinating, but about her just commitment to her own education and knowledge was really fascinating. And I feel very lucky to have been raised in a time even different than my mother, where education for women was a given, right? At the, the, by the time I came along, even for my mom, it wasn't. I remember my dad went to Texas A&M University, and I think his year was the first year they allowed women in the university because it was a military school in the beginning. And so I have such deep admiration for women who were so committed to knowledge. I've also been rereading lately about one of my favorite Spanish poet and philosophers, a woman named Sor Juan Inés de la Cruz, who became a nun so that she could pursue her studies. Also grateful that, you know, that uh, was not uh, an option to pursue because I love school. So if you're new to me or don't know that much about me, I have a doctorate from Stanford University in Spanish. I was, my specialization was 19th and 20th century Latin American poetry. And that academic definitely still lives on within me. And I have a deep, deep love of learning and history. And I still have a deep love of the Spanish language and literature and Latin American literature. And so it makes me very curious. I also love art history. And so I do a lot of deep thinking, right? I do. I'm very curious. And I am so grateful that that curiosity was honored and revered, right? Um, I've met a lot of women in my decades of, of coaching others whose parents wouldn't pay for them to go to art school because they didn't think they could make a living or coming from a, a family, both my husband and I, um, a considerable number of teachers and librarians in our background because that was the career choice that was available, secretary, nurse, or school teacher, right? And to have been offered so much opportunity for learning and to see the women who fought for their right to learn just really always strikes me. So I don't know if these are my best clouds. I actually have a brush that's perfect for painting clouds, but it's somewhere over on the other side of the studio. But I'm getting some of that cloud-like going. 
And this is where I want to pause and look and think about my lights and my darks and maybe start to vary up that palette a little bit with, I'm liking these kind of lighter blues, but the it's very bright, which makes the, the piece stand out. But there's also something about sort of maybe continuing the colors. There is a little bit of gray. There's even some pink in some of those clouds. I definitely know I'm going to come back and use some nice gold paint and really gold up this frame. But this is such a fun example of being inspired by a photo to create something that I'm making my own and theirs, right? So it's both this this ancient story, and it's one of the stories I will leave in the magazine, is the story of the hot air balloons. But to have that sort of just be both theirs and mine makes me kind of happy, and it's just a different way of creating and playing along. So I'm going to come in with just a little touch of rose here. So I think this is, I love this color. So this is a primary magenta instead of a quinacridone magenta. And I just want like the tiniest little smidge of that to maybe continue in some of those clouds. And actually that's much maybe even pinker than I want it to be. I'm going to want that to be a little bit oranger. I'm not putting my brush in the water. So one of the things about working in a journal like this and working with acrylics overall is you can really protect your pages and your covers by working much drier and not trying to, to get your surface too wet. And acrylics layer much better. They're much happier when they're dry. All right, so I don't want that to be totally orange, but I do want to just tone that down just a little bit and see if we can just create a little bit of extra color kind of flowing on. And I'm just sort of flowing it a little bit where it already was on the surface, letting that maybe even continue on the spine. Maybe imagining that sun coming in and just adding some color. So again, this kind of just playful approach to painting really frees us up. I had no destination in mind. I just knew I wanted to turn this journal into something that's mine, that's something that's about exploration and adventure. And it feels like I have a good start on it. And this is one that I definitely have to be really patient with and let those layers dry because it's on fabric. It takes a little bit longer for that paint to dry. And just hitting it with my dryer won't necessarily get all those layers dry. And I really want to keep the, the dryness. So I'm looking, I want just a little dab of black here. And it's interesting because this is, uh, there's a little thing sticking out of the picture here that is, th there's smoke coming out that it's actually not the darkness of the clouds. But what I know is that if I just add a little bit of black to some of these clouds, and I'm just going to, mix it with these other colors to gray it up a little bit that we just will start to create a little more dimension in our clouds and, and i love cloud gazing watching clouds looking at the shapes of the clouds i love sunrises and sunsets equally So maybe creating a little more stormy so you can see it just starting to come together a little bit, just being able to see those clouds standing out a little bit more just by adding that little touch of gray on there. And I'm letting it just kind of mix with the other 
colors that are there so that it's not super dominant, but maybe down here in the foreground we'll have a little bit more. And it's interesting, the date is embossed down here in the corner, and if I wanted that to get covered up, it's definitely going to take some work to, to get that covered up. That was a little darker than I wanted. A little orangier, not quite as gray. And this is how simple it can be to convert a, a cover of a book and take it and make it into something that really is your own, unique to you, but inspired by what was already there. And I love repurposing books this way. So over the next week or so, I will continue to work in this particular journal. I tend to just pick one and work in it over time for a while. And so I really enjoy the, the consistency of doing that. This is quite a large journal. Do I have a ruler here? My cat literally keeps stealing my ruler. She's hilarious. I don't know why she loves it. But, you know, it's probably um, like a 9 by 12 size. So it's a bigger page than I've been working on. I've been working on these, you know, smaller pages. And I'm not going to drop that down in the paint, although what's on that page? Well, maybe I am. So maybe I'm just going to let that paint come over there. And then I'm feeling like I'm just going to continue on the background with the same cloudy sky, that there doesn't need to be a lot happening on the back. So I'm just going to come in with those same blues that I started with and get some paint on this side of the journal as well. And then I'm going to walk away from it and let it get really, really dry. So this time I think I'm going to come in, let's see, with a little bigger brush. Although I'm super curious, I've got this toothbrush sitting here from my found objects class that's releasing this week. I haven't put it out there too much yet. But I had fun really using this to create some really interesting texture and collage pages. And I'm wondering if I just start with this, what can I do with it? It's interesting. So I'm getting these really lovely swirly marks. It actually moves the paint really fast. And it's getting into the tooth of that surface and sort of creating kind of a very different relationship between the paint and the surface than a brush did because it kind of gets into those edges differently. So don't be afraid to use things that you find around the house. Go on a scavenger hunt around your house and have some fun with different materials. What did I just do with that? There it is. I want a little more of the blue. With those different materials and see what kind of marks you can make. Right? Like we can get very stuck in our routines and always kind of do the same things, right? Always kind of do the same thing. So I'm going to come back in with a little bit of that white for some of those clouds. And what happens if we use the toothbrush for that? So getting creative with the substrates that you paint on as well as the things you use to paint with. A paintbrush isn't always my go-to. I love all kinds of scrapers. So this isn't working for me for doing the clouds, but it was kind of a, a fun experiment. And I have an interesting layer of paint down. What I'm noticing is that this one has more of that brilliant blue and less of the teal and also the variety of color where I've added the grays and just a little touches of pinks create a lot of visual interest as well. But I've got a good start on this here. And I'm really scrubbing that toothbrush in there to cover up that white gesso underneath. Get all the way up to those edges. And then as that 
those blues dry, I'll be able to come back in again with, make those clouds just stand out a little bit more. I'm probably going to want some of them to kind of just bleed right over that spine as well. Let's get a different brush. And so every time you use a different brush, it creates a different mark, a different shape, a different, often a different texture. I think the thing to remember about clouds is that they're generally flat on the bottom, right? They're generally flat on the bottom, and there's so many different kinds of clouds. And when I lived in Santa Barbara for 10 years, we didn't get a lot of clouds. It was pretty boring weather-wise there. It was a lot of really beautiful, warm, sunny days. But I missed storms and variety in Colorado. And Texas, the other two places I've mostly lived, have amazing clouds. Amazing clouds. Okay, a little bit more of that black. And I'm going to just put that right onto that brush with the blue. Maybe just come in and just create a little dimension in my clouds. And that gray in clouds is usually created by moisture that they're holding, interestingly, if you know anything. One of my um, easiest science classes I took in university was meteorology. Just super fun to learn about different clouds. I was a Spanish major. I could have cared less about math and science. I loved history and literature, and I took a lot of political science classes. And so I took really easy math and science because they were not in my zone of interest or my zone of genius for sure. All right. So I think I'm going to call this done for now. So a great, simple way to take an old book and completely make it yours. And then I'm curious to come back. So now this is what I love to do with extra paint left on my palette. Where's my scraper? So I've got a little bit of those colors left over here, and I'm just going to put it down on the page. I had some blue, looks like. This is a great way to use up extra paint. And then there's already something on that page to start. Can't wait to see where this page is going to go. I'm kind of curious. I have no idea where it's going to go. But I will come on tomorrow morning and do one of these pages with the watercolor grounds and play with some watercolor tomorrow so we can see what happens. But look how fun that is. Look how fun that is. So I'm going to come back in and I'm going to cover up that. Let's see if we still got some blue on our toothbrush here. This is so good for getting into some of those nooks and crannies, really getting that paint in there. <laughs> this may become one of my new favorite tools to play with. And then I literally just dip it in my water just like I would a paintbrush to clean it. But I have this adventure, exploration, journal that I created. Once it's nice and dry, I'm going to come in with some nice gold paint or maybe a gold Posca and clean up the frame around it because I love it's like I'm looking into a magnifying glass. And maybe it's going to say explore up here on the journal. So such a fun way to just create our own altered book and to upcycle an old book. And there's so many fun things that we can do inside of it. So I'm going to have a lot of fun, I think, over the next couple of weeks showing you all the different ways that I would work in a book like this. So thank you all for joining me. This is Dr. Manette Riordan. This is Painting in Your PJs live with Manette. And I will be back tomorrow morning, Friday. I'm not here every Friday, but I do love Judy's question and want to explore a little bit. Hope you all have an amazing rest of your day. I'm looking forward to getting outside and getting some sunshine. See you guys all soon. Bye-bye.